Yeah, Engine. You may look for Marshal Bill Nichols. Nichols, why? Uh, him old friend me pass through town and wants to stop and say hello. We'll try the hotel later on this afternoon. He generally gets in about 4.30. Him not work here anymore? No, he retired. I took over about six months ago. My name's Hendricks. Look, I'm a little bit busy if there's anything else. Uh, nothing else. Say, Engine, wait a minute. Maybe you can help me out. Do you know Tom Bryan? No. Well, he's the banker here in Two Rivers. I've got some papers he ought to sign. I'm not going to have time to drop them off myself. Would you deliver them for me? Will you take them to him at bank? If he was at the bank, I'd take them over myself. No, he and his son are staying home today. You can't miss it. It's the first big ranch on the South Road. Well? Let me go. All right, much obliged. Take your gun off and leave it here in the office. Why leave gun? It's a local ordinance engine. You can pick the gun up when you come back from Brian's ranch. No, Dad. I'm through taking your orders. I'm through working for you at the bank. From now on, I'm going to live my own life. Stop playing the child. Be a man. Can't you once be a man? No, not the kind you want me to be. Not the cold-blooded banker. No regard for anything except the almighty dollar. I'm going to work my way through law school. Uh, you starve to death before you get your diploma. Well, that's my business. The West needs good lawyers, and that's what I'm going to do. All my life, I've worked to pile up a fortune for you. I've made myself the biggest man in this territory so that someday you could take over and be even bigger. Before I'd let you throw that all away, I'd send you to prison as a thief. A thief? I've never stolen anything in my life. No, but I'll accuse you of taking $10,000 out of the bank, and I can rig the books for evidence to make it stick. You wouldn't dare go that far. You're bluffing. Try me and see. All right, I will. Get out of my way. I'm leaving. You're staying. That's an order. Now, get out of my way. That's Fred, an order. Give me that gun. Dad! I didn't mean to shoot you. It was an accident. Get away from that door! Where are you? Get away! Stay away! Well, Engine, I see you got back. Uh, Marshal, you come quick. Me see murder. Murder? Where? At Brian's house. Me see a young feller named Fred shoot banker doing argument. Fred? Uh, me try to enter house, but him shoot at me through door. Me decide to come back here tell you what happened. Oh, well, much obliged, Engine. Where do you think you're going? To help capture young man. Not without a deputy's badge on, you're not. You've told your story, now make tracks. I'll take over from here. Did you see Marshal Bill Nichols? I don't have a chance, Kimasabi. Town had a new marshal named Hendricks. Him say Nichols retired maybe six months ago. Yes, I remember Bill saying he wanted to return to private life. Maybe him quit too soon. <laughs> what do you mean? Me see murder today. Me think Hendricks not able to handle investigation. You saw a murder? Uh, me take paper to home a banker named Brian. See young fellow shoot him. Tom Brian? You know him? Well, I've heard of him. Politically and financially, he's one of the most important figures in the West. I think we'd better return to Two Rivers and offer our help. People ask many questions about masks. Tano, I won't wear this mask. Brian's murder doesn't seem to have caused too much excitement here in town. You may not understand it, Kimisami. Hey! 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 
the way you guard your post. Y'all are supposed to be wide awake, alert, ready for any emergency. Come on, come on, Pop. Now, what do you want? <laughs> you know this old geezer engine? Ah, him friend. Him come see if you find murderer. What murderer? Man named Fred, him kill banker. What are you talking about, Injun? Let me tell you about him an hour ago. I never saw you before in my life. Now, if this is some kind of a joke... Just a minute, Marshal. You call my engine friend here a liar? Look, if there was a murder in Two Rivers, I'd know about it. Maybe the Redskin here got hold of a little too much fire water. I uh, may not argue. Me go Brian's house. I say we all go, Marshal. Come on. Well, suit yourself, but Brian's a mighty busy man. You better have a pretty good reason for wanting to bother him. Just leave your guns here. My guns? What for? It's the law. Look at here, Marshal. I ain't traveling this town without me six shooters. You want them? Try and take them. Make your draw. <laughs> ain't drawn yet? That's the fast, ain't Sonny? <laughs> okay, Pop, you win. You can keep the guns. I don't guess you'll hurt anybody with them. What do you say? Let's go, Injun. Come on, Martin. Marshal Hendricks. Just a minute. Howdy, Fred. I'm sorry to bother you, but these fellows wanted to see your dad. I told them he was probably busy, but they seemed awful set on it. Well, so... couldn't you come back a little later? My father is busy. Look here, Sonny. We ain't leaving until we meet your father face to face. You might as well make up your mind to that. Fred, who is it? Someone to see you, Dad. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, it's you, Hendricks. You not hurt, sir? Hurt me? Of course not. What's this all about, Hendricks? Well, I don't rightly know myself, sir. These two came storming into my office a while ago, claiming you'd been shot, so... Shot? By whom? By him. Me see through window. Indian, I don't know what you're trying to prove, but I don't think it's very funny. This gentleman happens to be my son. Furthermore, he doesn't even own a gun, do you, Fred? No, Father. Huh. Don't look much like a man with a bullet in him, does he, Indian? I've never felt better in my life. And now, if uh, you're convinced I'm not a ghost, maybe you let me get back to my work. Me sorry to bother you, sir. Here, yeah, me too. Come on. Oh, Hendricks. Yes, sir? Can you spare a moment? I'd like to talk to you. Well, sure, Mr. Brown. John. Help me to the couch. I not know what to say, Kimisabi. Me see if it shoot his father. I'm sure you did, Tom. There was a smell of medicine in the room, the kind they use when they bandage a gunshot wound. And here more proof, Kimisabi. Bullet holes made when Fred shoot at me. But why them try to fool us? We might find the answer if we look hard enough. We'd better get back to camp. I knew that crazy Indian would come back. I still think we ought to call in a doctor. You're a fool, Hendricks. I'm beginning to wonder why I ever had you appointed marshal. No doctor could look at this and say it was an accident. At least we've got the bleeding stopped. I'll be as good as new in a few days. But you, after the way I've planned for you, made things easy for you, and now this, it's a terrible thing to know that you've failed with your own son. Then why didn't you let me go this morning? I'd never let go of anything that's mine. I'll still make a man of you. My kind of man. Strong, powerful. Ruthless like you. I'll teach you to be like me if it kills both of us. I've got you where I want you now. If you step out of line, I'll send you to prison for shooting me. Even though it was an accident? I'll swear it was intentional. But nobody's to know about any of this unless I say so. Understand? Nobody does know about it except us three and that Indian. Yes, the Indian. If he comes back to town, jail him. And see that he never sets foot in two rivers again. Now get out of here, both of you. Let me rest.
Tonto, I think we'd better have a talk with Bill Nichols. The former marshal of Two Rivers he may be able to give us some information about that banker and his son. After all, concealing the gunshot wound is against the law. And Marshal Hendricks not seem to think so. Well, Hendricks is paid by Tom Bryan. He does whatever he says. But Bill Nichols can't be influenced. If he knows anything, he'll tell us. Uh, me ride into town and bring him back here for a talk. I'll be waiting. Be careful, Tonto. Real persistent, ain't you, Injun? Now, that's kind of too bad, because I don't think you're going to like our jail cell one bit. You not have right to arrest me. No? You got a job, Injun? No. Well, that's vagrancy, and besides, you're wearing a gun again. Either one of them charges is enough. Come on, let's go. Okay, Bruckner, get out. You said I could sleep here tonight, Marshal. No, not tonight, pal. Sorry. Never get to stay in jail when I want. People always pushing poor old Bruckner around, always telling him what to do, where to go, how to act. Just don't understand people anymore. Well, Engine, it's been nice knowing you. What do you do now? You caused too much trouble around here. You were given fair warning. You're going to be killed trying to escape. Tough luck, but those are the orders. Ah! Miss Abby! I decided to follow you, Tonto. I'm afraid there might be more trouble. Well, if you think I'm going to let a masked bandit take a prisoner away from me! No, Kim, Miss Abby. This is my thing. Good work, Tonto. He'll be out for a while. In a way, that's bad. Now we can't find out who tried to kill you and why. Maybe it's because me see fight between Banker and Son. That's right. We'd better have that talk with Bill Nichols. That is, if we can find uh, him. Him live in a hotel now. Wait till it gets dark and then enter the back way. What about him? We'll tie and gag him and lock him in that cell. We can talk with him later. How the Dickens are you? And Tonto, what are you two doing this far of the country? Well, originally, we stopped by to see you. Oh, I suppose you know I'm not the marshal anymore. Ah, uh, Hendricks say you retire. Oh, so you met Hendricks. Uh, we meet him. As a matter of fact, he tried to kill Tonto about a half hour ago. He tried to do what? Me see something him not want me to see. Hold it, Tonto. I want to hear every word of this. I can listen better with a cup of coffee. Gee, Hossifer, if that don't beat all. Tom Bryan, all this. A high-class banker and him going against the law. May think him lie to keep son out of trouble. Or to hold it over the boy's head as a threat. That'd be just like Bryan. Every time Fred shows signs of having a mind of his own, the old man finds a way to whip him back into line. Even if it meant ordering Marshal Hendricks to kill Tonto? Could be, but it'd be awful hard to prove. There's one way we can get that proof. How we get that proof, Kim Zemi? From Tom Bryan himself, by trapping him into a confession. We'll have to use you as bait, Tonto. Sounds pretty dangerous, mister. If Kimasabe think plan work, me not afraid to try it. I'll explain the details to you on the way to Brian's ranch. Come on. Marshal! Marshal! Marshal. I got him, Marshal. 
I'll get you on time right away, Marshal. Right away, just as fast as I can. What, what happened? How'd you ever get all tied up like this? Hey, Marshal, can I stay here tonight? They wouldn't let me sleep at the cafe, so I... Raise hands. What is this? What do you want? Me want truth, Mr. Bryan. Me see you shoot father this morning. Why are you deny it? Why you make Marshal say he'll never see me before? Why? Well, you got it all wrong, Indian. All wrong. Not wrong. It's better you talk now and talk plenty. That'll do, Indian. Put up your hands. You made a bad mistake coming here. From now on, you'll be in a jail cell. Me escape from jail once. Can do it again. What? Marshal locked me up this afternoon, trying to kill me. Me fight back and escape. He tried to kill you? Him say him follow orders. Is that true? Of course not. I told him to run the Indian out of town, that's all. You heard me. Well, the harm's been done now. This fellow knows too much. We'll have to shut him up. Murder? Is that what you're talking about? Fred, we've got no choice. What's happened to you? Have you lost all sense of decency? All reality? I think it's you who have lost sight of reality. This is no time for weakness, boy. You call it weakness because I don't want to see a man murdered. You didn't seem to mind putting a bullet in me. You pulled the trigger on that gun when you tried to take it away from me. And you know it. This Indian doesn't know it. His testimony could send you to prison. Well, let's sooner go to prison and have him killed. Stop being childish. If everything I've done, I've done for you. Getting rid of this Indian will be for your good, not mine. You'll be able to continue working at the bank, and someday you'll step into my shoes. Can't you see what that means? Oh, yeah, I know what it means. If I help you commit murder, I'll be under your thumb from now on. If you don't help me, I'll say that you shot me when I caught you stealing from the bank. And I'll see that you get the maximum sentence on both charges. Even though I'm innocent. Fred, you can't fight me. Be man enough to admit when you're whipped. Well, what'll it be? Cooperation or the chain gang? I thought you'd come to your senses. I think we've heard enough, Bill. Let's go. Go where, mister? Drop those guns now and get inside. Open up the door, Fred. We got visitors. Nichols, what were you doing out there? Listening to some pretty grim confessions, Mr. Bryan. These two must be in cahoots with the Indian, Mr. Bryan. I had him in jail, but he got away. So we heard. Well, it wasn't my fault, we'll Mr. We'll talk Bryan. about it later. Right now, you've got another job to do. And I'm sure there won't be any mistakes this time. No, sir. Before you have us killed, Mr. Bryan, I wouldn't have believed that a law-abiding banker could have fallen so low if I hadn't have seen it myself. I'm not interested in the beliefs of a masked outlaw. Take them out of here, Hendricks. It's happened because of your son, hasn't it? I warn you to be still. This has been your one failure, and you can't accept it. You've ordered a human being to be strong, and he hasn't obeyed you. Can't you understand, sir? Strength can only come from inner convictions, never from orders. Be still. You can't win this fight. Don't be a fool. It's true. That's why you hate Fred. Not because he's weaker than you, but because he's stronger. You think so? Fred, take this. Take it. These men will ruin us if they live. I want you to go with Hendricks. I want you to help him. All right, gentlemen. No! Well, Bill, how does it feel to be marshal again? Wonderful, mister. Just like old times. Stagecoach waiting to take prisoners to penitentiary. Oh, thanks, Tonto. All right, Mr. Bryan, Hendricks, time to be leaving. I saw the co... Oh, you're still here. Hello, Fred. I thought I'd come down and see you off. Thanks for coming down, son. Well, Dad, although I'm going to be in law school, I'll have a little free time on my hands. I thought I could come and visit you. I hope you will, son. And don't worry about the money for your schooling. Our new bank manager will send you whatever you need. The West needs lawyers, you know. Yes, sir, I know. And I'm sure Fred will make a good one. Sorry to break this up, but we better not keep the coach waiting. Thanks, mister, for helping my son be a man. 
Mr. Bryan, Fred was a man all along. All he needed was a little chance to prove it. Now, Bill, it's time that Panto and I were riding on. Uh, bye, Marshal. We come back this way someday. I'll be waiting for you. Good luck, Fred. Thanks, mister. Hi, Fred. Strange how things worked out. The only way it could have worked out, Fred. You know, I think Dad knew he was wrong all along. Just too stubborn to admit it. Well, he'll be back in a couple of years. And we'll be a lot closer together then. Thanks to Tonto, the Lone Ranger. I'm Silver! Away! The Lone Ranger! Riding fast, Tonto. Anything wrong? A Calico Kid robbed Cattlemen's Association office in Denton. Them ride south. Was anybody hurt? A me wound Calico Kid in arm. Oh, wounded man shouldn't be difficult to follow. Let's see if we can pick up his trail. But him never been caught, Kim Sammy. It's always the first time, Tonto. Let's break up camp. It's hurt pretty bad. You fellas ride on to Rio. I'll join up with you later. But Calico, you need help. I don't need anybody's help. Not now or ever. We've got a cut of that money coming to us, Calico. We can't stop to count it here. There's probably a posse on a trail already. So you take the money with you and we have to wait, is that it? Well, if you have any objections, we'll settle them right now. Maybe that's a good idea. Oh, no, Dallas, you'll never clear your holster. Go on, Dallas, draw. You're so anxious to die. We'll meet you in Rio City. But if you don't show, we'll be coming looking for you, understand? Denton robbery came us honey. Them split up here. Which trail we take? A single track. If I know the Calico Kid, the money's riding with him. Senor is hurt. He's 
Doctor, go turn down Manuel's bed, get some towels, and heat some water. Hurry, do as I say. You are looking for this, senor? I have taken good care of it for you. I am Manuel Sanchez. Who else is here? Just me, son, and Easter. You feeling better? She's my my angel, senor. She's the one that fixed you up. That arm of yours is pretty bad. The lucky Manuel found you when he did. What's your angle, lady? Angle? Why'd you bring me here? You were hurt and in trouble. That's reason enough for me. How did you get shot, senor? Was it outlaws? Manuel, our visitor's still weak. Don't ask so many questions. Saddlebags, where are they? In the barn with your horse. I want them. Here. Come on, children, we'll do as the man asks. No, Mama. We want to stay here with the senor. Don't we, Easter? Very well. I'll be right back. Stop staring at me! Far enough. What do you want? We're looking for someone, ma'am. An outlaw by the name of the Calico Kid. We've been on his trail. It leads this way. Him, very dangerous man. There are three thousand dollars reward for him. I don't ask or answer questions where a masked man is concerned. This mask stands for justice. We're here to protect you. You here alone? I live here with my children, but you're not going to go frightening them if that's what you have in mind. Well, all the more reason for you to cooperate with us if you have children in the house. I'm well able to take care of them myself. I haven't lived out in this country for 20 years without learning something. Now, get. I mean it. You get. They're leaving, senor. But if they had come in, you would have taken care of them, wouldn't you? Sure, kid. Wouldn't it be something, Easter? Watching the senor shoot it out with the strangers. Hey, Manuel, you mustn't tease Easter. I don't get it, lady. What makes you so sure I'm not the man they're looking for? I know who you are, Calico. I've known since you came here. Well, then why? The Lord says his children shall have a place of refuge. You came to me as a wounded child, and I had to help you. I still think you've got an angle. The only angle, as you put it, is that by helping you, Maybe I can convince you to turn yourself in and give back that stolen money. <laughs> Lady, if you think I'm here to get religion, you're dead wrong. I'm a patient woman, Calico. I can wait. And you'll have a long wait. Owen, if you have any ideas about collecting that 3,000, I'd advise you to forget it. We'll talk about that later. You rest a while and I'll finish up a bite to eat. Come on, children. See you later, Senor Calico. Just remember, son, if you're worth $3,000 as a bad man, you're worth a lot more as a good one. You think woman at ranch hides something, Kimosami? I'm sure of the tunnel. Why should she cover up for the Calico kid? Maybe woman have children. Calico frightened her. She wants to protect children. I've got to get into that ranch house and see for myself. You go in disguise? Yes, Tunnel. I'd like you to go into town. Get me some clothes and a mule. Uh, me be back soon. If Calico is at ranch, him not worry too much about old saddle tramp. <laughs> You're as right as rain, engine. Safe and sound, senor. You like the food? Yeah, kid. It's better than most. Do you have something important in the saddlebags? The money from the robbery, perhaps? My wife will not tell. You ask a lot of questions, don't you, kid? Did you get it all alone? I had a couple of guns riding with me, but I got the money. Then your friends.
they will not get any? They'd do the same to me if they had the chance. Besides, I can get hired guns anywhere. But what if they come after you? What if they want their money? This gun says they won't bother. There's not a man in these parts can outdraw me. I would give anything to see you in action, senor. Maybe you will, kid. Because if anybody comes looking for me, they're going to have a real fight on their hands. Mama, we have a visitor. Howdy, youngster. Hey, what's your name? Easter. I live here with Mama Angel. She's not my real mother. She adopted me. Manuel, too. That's right. Sure sounds like a nice woman. She's the nicest in the whole world. Easter, I'd like to meet her. Anybody else live here? Well, not exactly, but there's Easter? A... You looking for something, stranger? Uh, howdy, ma'am. Your little girl's been telling me what a fine woman you are. Not the kind to turn away an old man that needs rest and uh, some tasty victuals in exchange for chores. Saddle tramp, huh? Please let him stay, Mama. Well, if Easter vouches for you, I guess I can't turn you away. You can bear down the barn. I'm just sticking to take up supper. You can join us. Much obliged, ma'am. Thank you, Easter. <laughs> Easter, you sap another place for Mr. Uh, Stokey, ma'am. Old Ed Stokey. <laughs> Run along. Well, Mr. Stokey, I suppose we'll be able to find a few things for you to do around here. Running a ranch is a big job. <laughs> sure is, ma'am. We don't need no help around here. This old man's been traveling quite a spell, Frank. Well, he can keep right on traveling. We don't want him. I don't want to cause you folks any trouble. You just stay put, Mr. Stokey. Frank's been a mite hot-tempered since his accident. And you simmer down, Frank. You ought to know better than anyone I wouldn't turn away a body that needs help. Well, just for the night, then. Senor Calico, I am finished with my chores. Now will you tell me about the time you robbed Manuel? Uh, no, take it easy, mister. Don't hurt him, Mr. Calico. Please. Didn't hear a word the boy said. Even if I did, I'd forget it mighty fast. The old <laughs> ears ain't what they used to be. Now, let's see. The boy said your, your name was Pete. Oh, was it Joe? <laughs> Doggone if I ain't plumb forgot it already. Well, you just keep right on forgetting it, old man, if you want to stay alive. Now, hand me that gun, carefully. Sure, sure, mister. All, all right, Minna. Let's sit down and eat our supper. You up there, Mr. Stokey. Go on, Manuel. I am sorry, Senor Calico. Forget it, kid. Anyway, he could not hurt you. Why, you could take care of him just like that. Manuel. It is true. No one is as brave as a calico kid. You mustn't talk like that. Mama said... I was not speaking to you. This is man talk. That boy of yours is sure full of fire, ma'am. He's a good boy. But sometimes I think he's a bit resentful against females. Women. What do they know? Seems to me Mama Angel's making your life real fine, son. Oh, I wish I could do a lot more. But it's not easy raising a family on a small income. I'd say you... You're doing fine. Real fine. Do you have a family, Mr. Calico? No. You mean you're all alone? I've been alone ever since I was a kid. Ever since my old lady took off with some fast-talking miner. I'm sorry, son. Look, lady, don't go feeling sorry for me. I don't ask for nothing. Nobody gives me nothing, either. I learned a long time ago that anything a man wants, he's got to take. He's got to take it alone. Senor Calico is a great man. When I grow up, I want to be just like him. There. See, mister? You sure made a big impression on that boy. That ought to make you feel right good. Go ahead, not it? Anything wrong with it? Well, it's all the way you look at it. One thing for sure. It's going to take a lot to change that boy's mind. Manuel. Haven't we all forgotten something? Easter, will you say the blessing? For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Bless us and protect Mama, Manuel, and Mr. Stokey. And please keep a special eye on Mr. Calico.
because he doesn't have anyone else, and he's all alone. Amen. Amen. Miss Angel, <laughs> Jay, let me give you a hand with those. Thank you, Mrs. Delkey. Yes, ma'am. I can see myself now, senor, riding a black stallion from town to town. My six guns blazing fire. There goes Manuel Sanchez, they will say. He is the bravest outlaw in all the world. You got the right idea, kid. Manuel, please don't listen to him. He's all wrong, 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 wrong. Things in life. If, if you got this in your hand, and you can take him. Appears to me you ain't told the boy the whole story, mister. I mean all the running and hiding and looking back over your shoulder. That's all part of it too, boy. On the count of one fine day, you'll be looking the wrong way. Somebody will shoot just a little bit faster. Put a hole in you, you could drive a horse and a wagon through. You know, if you weren't an old man, I'd take you apart with my bare hands. Go ahead, Calico. Show the boy how brave you are. I don't believe him, Calico. We don't care what anybody says, do we? Manuel, I think you'd better go to your room. No. Do as I say, son. I wish I could go with Calico right now. Then I'd be rid of you. Forgive him, ma'am. The boy didn't mean it. He's all mixed up. I wanted to help him, Mr. Stokey. Give him the things he needed. Love and a home. I thought you could be helped, too. But I was wrong. For the first time in my life, I wished I hadn't helped someone. Satisfied now, mister? I didn't ask them to help me. No, but they did help you. You owe them something. The way I heard it, you'd have bled to death if that boy hadn't have found you. He saved your life, mister. What are you driving at? Maybe this time you can save his life. And that nice old lady, too. Don't you see you're hurting her? I got my own worries. Then you can add this one to them. As long as that boy looks up to you and your kind of life, he's going to be hurt. With, with Mama Angel, he's got a chance. A chance you didn't have when you were a boy. I'm leaving in the morning anyway. He'll forget all about me. I don't think so, Calico. He's off to a bad start. He's going to end up just like you. Unless you convince that boy you're not a hero. There's nothing I can do about it. Maybe there is. No, Tala, we, we can't capture him here. It's too dangerous for Mama, Angel, and the children. That's right. We wait until him get on trail tomorrow. Something worry you, Kimisabi? Yes, Tano, but not about the Calico kid. Manuel, the young Mexican boy you tell me about? Right. Unless something happens to change his mind, he'll turn out just like the Calico kid. I wish to go with you. You can wish it, but you're not going. But, senor... Look, kid, I gotta ride fast and hard. You just be in the way. I promise I will do whatever you say. Your arm, you won't need help. I told you before, I don't need help from anybody, ever. You're gonna need help now, Calico. There are two men outside. They say they want their money. They won't get it ever. You will fight them, won't you, senor Calico? Nobody's gonna get this money, kid. Thought I told you boys to wait in Rio City. We're through waiting. Where's the money? It's in here, but you're going to have to get by me to get it, and I don't think you can. My pleasure, kid. Anytime you're ready. Get them, senor! You not be frightened, little girl. You go in house. Throw the money out here, Calico. You haven't got a chance. He will never give up. He isn't that a coward? We are not afraid. I am like you. We will not give up, will we? You are not afraid, senor. Get 
smart, Calico. Give up. Don't shoot, Dallas. Here's the money. Now, come out with your hands in the clear. Give me a break, Dallas. Don't shoot. Give me a break. I've been waiting a long time for this, Calico. I want to see just how fast that gun of yours really is. No, Dallas. Please, you got your money? Please. Go for your gun, big man. He's afraid. He's a coward. <laughs> We're coming in, Calico. New job, Cotton. Someday he'll understand, ma'am. Someday he'll know it takes more than a gun and bad manners to be a brave man. Everything will be all right, Calico. We'll see that you get a fair trial. I don't need anybody's help. We'd like you and the children to keep the reward money. Manuel, you men have house. You take good care of women. Adios. Adios. Mama, was that man a marshal or something? No, not exactly, son. But that's the man you'd make no mistake in looking up to. That's the Lone Ranger. I am Silver! Away! something else. Don't forget, today is the tunnel. Look there. It's a runaway wagon. Come on. Mr. and your friend. We'd have been killed if it wasn't for masked men. Oh, Thomas, that's a hold up. Now, 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 Kate. Now, look, mister. All I got on me is three dollars. Believe me, sir, I'm not a bandit. But that mask. Don't let this mask trouble you. You're not afraid of me, are you, ma'am? Oh, well, he did save our lives, Tom. Yeah, that's right. What made your team bolt? Firecrackers? Yeah, how'd you know? Well, this is the 4th of July. It sure is. They're having a big rodeo back a piece. Feels like all the flat rocks out there celebrating. Somebody must have tossed them in there when we drove past. Well, if it's all the same to you, we'll be getting along. I got me a watch to pick up at the clockmakers. Kate here, give it to me on our first wedding anniversary, 40 years ago. Do you two live all alone? Yep, all my kids is growed up and scattered. Ma and me ain't got nobody but each other now. You want more than that? Ain't no, sir. But if anything was to happen, I... That's why I'm so all fired grateful to you. Don't mention it, Mr. Uh... Ellsworth. Tom Ellsworth. Well, goodbye. Thanks again. Hello. Adios. Bye. Bye. come for his watch. Well, give it to him. I can't, Steve. It ain't fixed yet. He said give it to him and get rid of him fast. If you don't, I will. Hello there. Anyone in? Oh, Joe. Anyone in? Just a minute. Well, 
Well, you see, I didn't forget you. He was afraid you was off to the rodeo. I'm about the only man in town who ain't. Never disappoint a customer. That's my motto. Yes, sir. I stayed open special just for you. <laughs> Yes, sir, here she is, all ready for you, running just as good as new. Now, just a minute, I'll set her to the exact second. Yeah, mainspring was busted, that's what it was. Overwinding, that's what done it. Yes, sir, it'll do it every time, overwinding. Here, I'll wrap it up. Hey, don't you. bother, I'll just take it. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, there you are. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah, three dollars even, yes, sir, and thank you very kindly. Uh-huh, and I'll just open the door <laughs> for you. Uh, oh, hold on, then. Can't run him. Ain't running. Well, here, let me take a look. Well, what do you know? I forgot to wind it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm getting absent-minded. Yes, sir. <laughs> there, that does it. Now she'll run all right, all right. Much obliged. Oh, not at all. I'm glad you caught me up on it. I hope you have a nice trip home. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, ma'am. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> All clear, boys. Yeah. Not a soul in sight. Good. And while we're going, you keep your eyes open. Look. This watch still ain't running. Not a kick out of it. Maybe if you shake it a little. He's just plumb stopped. Well, darn if I'm going to pay three dollars for nothing. Firecrackers, give me Sammy. No, gunshots. They came from town. Must be thirty thousand dollars worth here, Joe. Easy. Only I wish old Tom Ellsworth hadn't done a look at your faces. <laughs> I bet he wishes the same thing. Yeah, but you still got his wife to worry about. No, I don't think she saw him. The old man kept pushing her aside and she had her eyes covered up like this. They shot him. They shot my Tom. Please help him. Who did it, ma'am? Two men. I didn't see them very clear. They were robbing the express office. Well, try not to worry. The bullet only creased his skull. Him need doctor, can you tell me? Yes, and quickly. Time will bring you and your husband into town while I go on ahead. Yeah, Luke. Do you know we'll be getting out of here? You got your story straight? Oh, sure. When I heard the explosion and then the shooting, I ducked under the counter here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, Luke, let's go. Hold it. Somebody's coming. Hold on. He's gone inside. Give me your gun. What for? Well, he's masked, ain't he? He's just made to order for us. How come? Somebody to pin it on. The masked robber. I'll hold him for the sheriff. Well, that makes sense. But you watch yourself. Mister. I'm making a citizen's arrest, that's what I'm making. And just to make sure you don't try no tricks. Get out of the way, 
Yeah, get him. No. He's a crack shot. You miss him and he'll get you. Lucky Joe, that's me. What'd you pick up? A piece of the mask man's boot spur. I shot it off. Well, what's a piece of broken boot spur worth? It'll send him to jail. That's what good it is. Yeah. It's proof, proof that he done the robbery. Yeah, you may be right. If he ain't at your funeral. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of here. You check the street. Hey, they're coming back. Who is? The whole town. They're coming back in the rodeo. Listen. And there's Tom Ellsworth's buckboard and engines driving it. Yeah, that's Tom's wife in the back of the wagon. And there's Tom with his head in her lap. Yeah, he's dead, eh? Well, he can't be, or they wouldn't be toting him into Doc Barney's office. That means the Doc's going to patch him up. No, oh, here comes the sheriff. He's coming here. Get back. Back inside. Just a minute, please. Sam, am I ever glad to see you. Come in. Come on in. What do you know about this robbery, Joe? Everything, Sam. I've seen him. The masked robber. I tangled with him. I shot this piece of spur off his boot. Yeah, you find that man and you got your robber. I see. Just one man, Joe? Yeah, that's all I've seen. Come along with me, Joe. For what for? Because Tom Ellsworth's been shot. And his wife says there were two outlaws. <laughs> Still unconscious, Doc? Yeah, it's a pretty bad concussion, but he'll make it all right. Uh, where's his message? In there, asleep. I gave her something to keep her quiet. She'll be out for oh, five or six hours. Too bad. I wanted to get her story again, alongside of Joe's here. Sheriff, what I told you is gospel. That piece of spur proves it. Why don't you get yourself a posse instead of wasting time? Posses are my business, Joe. Doc, let me know the minute he comes to, will you? I sure will, Sam. I'll be in my office going through some wanted posters. We'll see if he can recognize any of them. You stay here, Joe. Right here, understand? Well, sure, Sam, sure. I got nothing better to do anyway. Come in. You. Hello, Sam. So you're the masked man. I'm afraid so. Glad you haven't forgotten me. Forget you? After what you did for me and Abilene when I was flat on my back? That long time ago, Sheriff. You not see me then. You were a plenty sick man. I sure was. You must be Tonto. Sam, I'm afraid we have a mean case in our hands. There's nothing between me and that cell block but the word of a little old lady. Don't I know it. Well, suppose you tell me your side of it while we wait for Tom Ellsworth to come to and maybe identify some of these bad men. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. She's right in the next room, Tom. She's asleep. I want to see her. Now, take it easy, Tom. You wouldn't want to wake her up, would you? No. No. Hustle over to the sheriff's office and tell him Tom's come, too. Me? Uh-uh. You heard him, the sheriff. He said for me to stay right here. Well, never mind. I'll go myself. Listen to me. Uh, if Joe, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, and we ain't got much time. What I gotta say is for your ears only. You hear me? Uh, yes, Joe. Uh, yeah, well, I promise you won't breathe a word. Uh, when them two fellas took a shot at you, I seen them, Tom, clear as I'm seeing you, and I recognized them. They're the Grody brothers, and they're killers. That's why my lips are sealed, Tom, and yours better be, too. Hi, Joe. Why? Because if you ever identified them, they'd stop at nothing. Nothing, do you understand, to get even with you. Yeah. They'd even kill your missus. No. Yes, Tom. If anything, anything was to happen to Kate, I... That's why I'm telling you, Tom. That's what I've come here for. I... Shh. The sheriff's coming. The sheriff wants to talk to you, Tom. Hello, Tom. How are you feeling? I'm... I'm all right. That's him, Sheriff. That's the man that robbed the express office. I know all about him, Joe, and he's not the man that robbed the express office. Now sit down and shut up. He, he's a good man. I trust him. Here, maybe you better do this. Tom, I want you to look at these pictures. See if you can recognize them as the men who shot you. Now, this is the Durango kid, wanted for mail robbery. No. 
Dave Atchison, train robber. Was he one of the men? No. Now, these pictures are the Grody brothers, bandits and killers. They've been reported recently in this area. Well, are these the men, Tom? What's the matter, Tom? Are these the two men? How can I tell? I can't see them. But, Tom, you saw the others. I tell you, I can't see them. I can't see anything. My sight. What's happened to me? It's gone. It's gone. Kate. Where's Kate? Don't let them. Don't let them hurt her. Take it easy, Tom. Come on with me. Come on. Well, what do you make of that? Sam, we know now there were two men who robbed the express office. Because Tom said, don't let them. Don't let them hurt her. What about it, Joe? There could have been two or twenty, I don't know. Because I ducked under my counter when I heard the shooting. All I seen was this one when I come out. Well, Doc, I just can't make it out. Couldn't even see his wife. Had to touch her to be sure she was there asleep. Yet he could see her before I showed him these pictures of the Grody brothers. Me think I'm afraid what might happen to wife if him identify them. Then he's faking. Well, I doubt it, Sam. I think Tom actually lost his sight. Because he was afraid to see. Well, there is such a thing as hysterical blindness. And I'd be willing to go along with it, Mr. Jeff, if I was sure there was nothing else to it. Then why not make sure, Doc? There's a nice specialist in Abilene. You could take him there on the morning stage. I'd be glad to. One thing is certain. We can't pin this on the Grody brothers or anybody else, unless Tom Ellsworth can identify them. What you doing? I'm fixing up a little old 5th of July firecracker loop. What for? You stay awake once in a while, you know what for. Just keep that morning stage to Abilene from ever getting to Abilene, that's what for. Why, is there some gold or something on it? He's carrying a little old man who just might get his eyesight back and start pointing his finger at us. This will keep him from pointing. Sheriff, here's my case against Joel Benson. Why should a man who's so scared of shooting suddenly turn brave, come out of his store, and put a gun on me? It not make sense. Now, if Joel Benson is mixed up in it, he had motive and opportunity to scare Tom into hysterical blindness. When? When Tom regained consciousness, Doc came over to tell you about it. That left Joe alone with Tom. You think Joe scared the old man into this, this hysterical blindness by telling him the Grodys would do something to his missus? I'm almost sure of it. I think we'd better have a little talk with Joe Benson. Come on. That's funny. Joe's door being off the latch this early in the morning. Well, you're right, Sam. It is before opening. Joe! Oh, Joe Benson! Miss Abby, look. Sam, it looks like robbery. Him dead, Kimitami? Yes, Tom. He's been shot. Reckon you were right about him being mixed up in it. Uh, him have pencil in hand. He must have been trying to write a message. Sheriff, look at this. Grody's done it for the gold Bomb on stage. We'll go off nine. Nine? Maybe it means nine o'clock. It's quarter past eight now. The stage left at seven. And Tom Ellsworth and his wife are both on it. And Doctor, too. Come on, Tom. Even now, we may be too late. this for anything. Ain't every day you can see a stage which goes straight up in the air. Hey, look back there. The mass man in that engine. Maybe we better head him off. Come on. Ah!
bottom of the coach. It'll explode any second. Get out, hurry. Come on, Em. Oh, my foot is hot. Get out, Doc. You too, Tom, while I help her. Oh, I won't leave you. No matter what happens, I'll never leave you. Oh, please, Tom. Save yourself. You must. It's all right, honey. For nigh on the 40 years, we've been living together. Now, if it's our time to die, we'll die together. Oh, Tom. Tato, get up on top. Throw the luggage off. Oh, you two are hurting me. I'm getting you loose, Ma. I can see. I can see. <laughs> Them. I've got to save those men. Him past help, Kimisami. That one, too. The bomb they made for the others killed them. Tano, as it says in Proverbs, whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. He that rolleth a stone will return upon him. Sorry, Sheriff, but we couldn't save the two outlaws. But we saved gold from Saddlebag. That proved them outlaws. What I can't figure out is the way my eyesight come back to me. Tom, it's not hard to understand. You lost your sight when you thought your wife's life was in danger. But when it really was, you could see because you had to. Well, folks, it's time Tano and I were riding out. Bye, Sam. Thanks, mister. Bless you for what you did for my Tom. Yes, ma'am. He never did say his name. He never does. But I don't mind telling you, he's the best friend the West ever had. He's the Lone Ranger. I am Silver! Oh, 